Hola de Belize. It's like English is their national language. But I was just wondering if you've ever sat and thought to yourself, uh, Jessica, what are seven brutally honest reasons that women find me boring? Well, if so, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to tell you exactly that today. <laughs> and make sure you never miss out on another opportunity to hear all this brutally honest shit these bitches will never tell you. Or another one of my videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button with the notification bell. Okay, so are there seven of these? I like to get right to the point because this is really long-winded and my battery dies so fast. Okay, so the first one is you don't give a fuck. Really, you just kind of give off this vibe that you're like, hum, hum, ing through life. And you know, you're kind of just going through the motions and waiting to die. No one wants to fuck a mannequin or a zombie. Y'all are the ones who love sex dolls, not us. So if you seem very dispassionate about your life, we will feel very dispassionate about you. Number two is you fish. Let me explain. No, I'm not talking about your infamous for holding up the fish pictures in your dating apps. I'm talking about you sit there and you try to fish for things to talk about from others. Us, for example. So, uh, what do you like to do for fun? Or even, so, uh, like, what kind of things do you do? Like, what kind of music do you listen to? This is something I call fishing, where you're trying to get her to come up with a conversation topic that you can jump on because you have nothing else to talk about. In the beginning, our feelings are very black and white. Does he make me feel good? Does he make me feel bad? And if you're sitting there trying to yank the conversation topics out of us, we're gonna feel that pull we're gonna feel that pressure to come up with something wonderful to talk about and then we're gonna feel bad about you. That's also really fucking boring sitting there waiting for you to depend on us to liven up the mood. Don't do it, dude. Third one is you over question. A lot of dating coaches out there, a lot of pickup artists will say like, you gotta get her talking. Bitches love talking. Which okay, fine, yeah. Like, we want you to seem interested in us and shit. But if all you're doing is asking about me, I'm gonna feel like really uncomfortable and like you're ripping my clothes off while keeping all your clothes on. And I live with me. I'm bored with me. It's like, nah, I'm fun as fuck. But I leave my house. I have conversations with other people to experience something different than me. So if you're just sitting there getting her to unload about herself, she is going to be very uninterested in you and therefore get really bored with you. On the flip side, number five, is it five? On the flip side, number four, was it four? Number four is you talk about yourself way too fucking much. There's so many guys that just like will cut a girl off to keep talking about how fucking great he is. I had a client bless his heart. He was so excited about something he did over the weekend and he thought it was so fucking interesting because it's just about the only interesting that happened to him since we met him. He went on and on and on and blah, blah. Blah, my exciting ass life, blah. And after a while, as he's talking to my girlfriend, he doesn't realize that she's like, oh, oh wow, oh cool, oh fun. Blah. In the same regard, if you get us sitting there talking about ourselves the entire fucking time, we're gonna be just as bored as all you do is talk about yourself the entire fucking time. And the reason we get bored when we're either talking too much about ourselves or talking too much about you is because we're not feeling any exchange of emotions between you and I. And if there's no exchange of emotion, what are we doing but just sitting here and putting up with conversation? This now leads me to number five, which is you are a storyteller. I actually stopped talking to a guy because he was too much of a storyteller. Just, you know, somebody who thinks they're so fucking cool, they need to tell all their stories all the time. I know you at least know a person like this if you're not guilty of this. And how fucking annoying. Somebody just wants to talk about all the cool fucking shit they do all the time. Like, dude, like, yeah, that one time. Huh, <laughs> remember that one time? They're also the person that tells the same story all the fucking time. Again, same thing. If there is no exchange of emotion here, granted, you are getting emotional about your shit and your story. But stories can only take you so far. We need to feel a spark between us. You can't just be the fucking fire show here. Number six is something I always talk about in my Speak Spark Arousal program, which is you talk about things too much. I always say if we're not talking about me, if we're not talking about you, we're talking about third party objects that are placed between us and hindering that connection. Maybe you talk about the weather all the fucking time or the geography all the fucking time or your job all the fucking time. Again, the number one interest we all have is in our sense. And if you're not talking about your personal human experience that I can connect to, that I can relate with, with which I can relate, to which I can connect to, then I'm not 
going to really feel nothing for things. You're not going to feel nothing for things. If I went on and on about the different color lipsticks I debated on for this video and how certain shades go with certain colors, y'all have probably already checked out by the time I got to the end of that sentence. So again, just like you wouldn't give a fuck about a girl sitting going on and on and on about Grey's Anatomy or the color of her eyeshadows and chat, that's how you should look at you talking about things too much. Anything that takes away from me, you and us, is going to sever that connection even more. Which then brings me to number seven, which is exactly what I've been talking about this whole time, is you're not creating connections. Things get boring when you are trying to appeal to our rational mind. You're trying to appeal to our mental faculties, but we really need you to appeal to our physical and emotional ones. And if we don't feel any emotions coming from you, if we don't feel any connection to you, emotionally or physically, then this can only sustain for so long. Here's the thing, we all spend a certain amount of time in here, a certain amount of time in here. The only things that draw us out of this are things that are catering to our senses, either physically or emotionally. So if you're sitting here just overwhelming the here, you're not doing shit, but adding more shit to my subconscious and the weird dreams I'm gonna have later tonight. So in order to get her feeling something from you, not falling asleep on you, not passing up on you for another guy, you have to make her feel connected. You have to make her feel emotionally compelled towards you. And that's something I go over completely with the override effect or my assistant Clayton goes over it, which is the tenant for my speech spark arousal program, which does exactly that. It's speaking step by step to arouse those emotions and that chemistry and any woman you come across. So if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you check it out right here. Check yourself for these seven things, my God, please. And thanks for watching as always. I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.